Hey guys, this video is for my upper division classes and it covers how to prepare an application design document. So the question is, is why would we create an application design document? Well, when we build web applications or other software, we should think about what we're going to build before we try and build it. This actually leads to a better product and fewer surprises during the development process. So what are the steps we go through in creating an application design document? Well, the first thing we do is figure out what you want to build. If you think about it, all software does something. It either automates work or facilitates communication or stores data for you to retrieve later. So all software has some sort of function and we want to figure out what that function is before we start trying to build it. So for example, a calendar app, it shows a calendar, it shows you what day a particular date falls on for any particular year. It stores events in a calendar. It notifies you of the events. In fact, if we think about it, a calendar could do a lot of things. You as the software developer, if you're building a calendar, have to figure out where you want to stop adding features. So this is where figuring out what you want to build comes in as the first step. So second, once you figure out what you're gonna build, you need to figure out how the software or the application is going to do what you want it to do. So if you think about it, each feature does something a certain way. And the way it's done is determined by a bunch of different factors. Things like the platform it runs on, the user interface, and so on. So take, for example, desktop applications versus mobile applications versus, say, an Amazon Echo. They can all do the same thing, but they do it in different ways. And that means that the user interface itself works in different ways. So some are point and click, some are voice activated, and some might have gestures like the old Xbox Connect. So in this example, we're actually building a web application. So we know that it's gonna be running on a web server and it's going to be point and click in the browser. But that doesn't tell us everything. So for example, we need to know how many web pages are there going to be in our application? What will the web pages look like? How are they gonna be laid out? Will there be a header? Will there be a footer and so on? How are we gonna handle navigation from one page to the next? Or is it going to be a single page application? Should we expect it to work on mobile devices? And if so, how do we handle things like orientation changes where you turn your phone from landscape to portrait? So now is the time to decide on the major details of how, and then we document it. And that's what the Word document I provided you goes over. You start off with an executive summary, which summarizes the entire document, followed by an overview. The overview is a description of how the application uh, is going to work and what it's going to do. Next, we'll talk about the hardware solution. What type of hardware is this running on? Uh, for example, if you're building a web app, you're gonna run it on a web server, but where is that web server? Is it in your own data center? Is it on a cloud provider such as Google or Amazon? Is it in your basement? So we figure out where this hardware is located. Then we figure out the software solution. What are we actually going to use for the software? Are we building it in Ruby? Are we building it in PHP or Python? We also need to think about the software solution in terms of the user interface. Take for example, a mobile device. We need to sketch out what each of the user interfaces looks like. Where do we have menus? Where do we have input boxes? Where do we have buttons? We also need to think about when we turn the phone sideways. If we're doing mobile devices, we also would like to consider things like tablets. What does it look like on a tablet? And what does it look like when the tablet is turned sideways? Lastly, we wanna think about what it's gonna look like on a desktop. So in this document, each of these are images that you can copy out into an image editing program and then just sketch out what's called a wireframe where you just draw little boxes and label the boxes showing where everything is going to be. This does not have to be a highly detailed, uh, realistic rendering of the items. It just needs to be little boxes showing where each of the items is going to fall on the screen. At this point, I will point out that if you're building a web interface for something, you really would like to take the mobile first approach. And by this, I mean design for a mobile application uh, on a mobile device such as a cell phone first, then figure out how you're going to scale it up onto a desktop. Now, 
once you have a good idea of what the user interface design looks like, you're going to realize that you have certain dependencies that you have to document. For example, you might do some things in the UI that require JavaScript, and you've decided, I want to use jQuery in order to facilitate the interactions with JavaScript. Uh, not a bad idea to use some sort of library uh, to help you do these things. You might decide you want to use Bootstrap for the look and feel, or you might decide you want to use Laravel for security and workflow. Any of these items should be documented in the design document and justified. If you can't justify including it in your uh, design, then you probably shouldn't be using it. Next, we're going to move on to costs. What is it going to cost to actually build this? When I say costs, I'm not just talking about dollars. I'm talking about time. So you should be able to estimate approximately how much labor it's going to take, what development tools you'll need uh, in terms of licensing or purchasing software, maybe hardware to run it on. You'll need different hardware solutions for your development environment, for your QA environment, and eventually for your production environment. You'll also want to look at the cost to operate the software. Uh, what hardware is it going to run on? How much is that going to cost? any software licensing you might have, and maintenance costs, such as how much maintenance does this require each month. Uh, you can document that in terms of dollars or hours. Lastly, in a design document, you really should think about the risks and mitigation plan for these problems you might uh, expect to run into. You'll always have risks associated with building and operating a system. So we'd like to take a look at all the major risks, document what they might be, what impacts they might have, and how you plan to mitigate this. So this wraps up the whole idea of a design document. Uh, to reinforce what we just went over, the purpose of this document is to figure out what you're going to build before you try and build it, and hopefully to eliminate any surprises.